<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Royal City Community Church. We're so glad that you could join us today. Let's just stand. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. So we just trust that others are going to join us as we begin to sing. But let's just lift up our hearts, lift up our voices in praise and adoration to our King. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, all the time. Thank you, Kingsley. I just want to declare something over you guys this morning. I have a devotional book that I use, and it's called, and this section is called Be Bold. Be bold. Amen. Be bold. I want to pray it over you, so let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we will be bold today. Hallelujah. We will be bold towards Satan, the demons, and the evil spirits, sickness, disease, and poverty. For Jesus is the head of all ruler and authority of every angelic principality and power, disarming those who are, were ranged against us. Jesus made a bold display and public example of them, triumphing over them. I am bold. We are bold, church. We are a bold church. We are a bold people. And Satan, you are a defeated foe. For our God and our Jesus reigns. We take comfort and encouragement and confidence and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Can we say this morning, the Lord is our helper. We will not be seized with alarm. We will not be alarmed. Church, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. We will not fear. We will not dread. We will not be terrified because our God rules and our God reigns. What can man do to us? I dare, we dare to proclaim the word towards heaven, towards hell, and towards earth. We are bold as a lion. Amen? Amen. We are bold as a lion, and we have made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and we are complete in him. And we praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise his holy name. God, we thank you that we are going to be bold today. We're going to be bold in our worship. We're going to be bold in our praise. We're going to be bold this week, Father God. Whatever situation comes our way, Father God, we're going to be bold. We're going to stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing it out this morning. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord, our God, is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be bold. Be strong. Be strong. For the Lord. Walking in the 
hear that today. He's with you. He's for you. He's not against you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today. That we come in your name, Jesus. We thank you that there's power in the name of Jesus. Ha. Mm. Am I speaking to someone this morning that just needs to know that there is power in the name of Jesus? When you speak that name, ha, demons have to flee. Sickness has to go. Depression has to leave. Oh, when you speak the name of Jesus, speak the name. It's in the name. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we speak the name. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We welcome you here, God. You're so good to us, Jesus. Father, we will live and breathe and have our being in you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free. Defeated. Yeah. 
we need to shout it out. We need to shout it out. Our God is fighting for you. Our God is pushing back the darkness. The enemy is the defeated foe. So church, let's declare this morning. Hallelujah. God is fighting for you. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name, in the name of Jesus.
today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is fighting for you. Sickness, you have to leave. Amen. Brokenness, you have to be healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what kind of week you've had this week, but I want to speak to you right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. I just don't mean the sanctuary, I mean this place, this body. Some of you probably didn't even want to come today. <laughs> Some of you probably didn't want to get out of your bed today. But you came. You came. You came. You came to give glory to the Father. You came to give glory to the Son. You came to give glory to the Holy Spirit. You came. And because of that, God's going to honor that. Amen. He's going to minister to you. He's going to minister through you. He's going to touch you this morning. You came. You probably were in pain, but you came. You probably had a headache, but you came. But you weren't feeling good on the inside emotionally, but you came. You came today. So God, we thank you that they're here today. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to minister to them right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's power in your name. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you this morning. Oh, he woke you up this morning. He gave you breath this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. You're welcome here, Jesus. Lord, you're welcome here. Lord, you're welcome in this body, Jesus. You're welcome in my mind, Lord.
Father God, we just want to say thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have, God, to stand as a church over our children, Father God. Father God, we thank you. This is the next generation, God. These are our next leaders, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill them. Fill them to overflowing, Father. We ask that a special anointing be upon them. Let them walk in your freedom, Father God. Let them walk in your love and your joy and your peace. Father, we pray for the teachers as they minister, Father God, to them, and their hearts are open to receive your word today. We thank you that, Lord, that seed is planted, that they will continue to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, God is good. Let's just open up with a word of prayer before we get into the word of God today. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for your presence in us, with us, and through us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to look into your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you want to reveal to each heart. God, that we're not just hearers of this word, but we're doers as well. Praise and thank you for that now. In Jesus' precious name, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
You know, we talked about, began to talk about faith last week, and I want to continue in that vein uh, this morning. I want to talk about faith, and I want to link that with prayer. And you know, we know, of course, that there are many different kinds of prayer. The Bible speaks of intercessory prayer and warfare prayer. Uh, there's devotional prayer. Of course, there's, there's worship, there's praise, there's communion, there's meditation in God's word. Um, but today we're going to be looking at prayer that expects answers. Amen? Amen? Prayer that expects answers. I mean, there's not a whole lot of point of continually approaching God for things to find that our prayers are not being answered. Amen? Amen? Amen. And there's definite reasons why some prayers are answered and some are not. And see, our, law, our, our lives, pardon me, are governed by laws. You know, they've got social laws, commercial laws, marriage laws, physical laws. You know, and, and there's little point in blaming God for not doing things if we ignore his laws. You know, think about it. If you, if you drive on the wrong side of the road, you're not in England, okay? <laughs> you drive on the wrong side of the road, you're going to suffer the consequences of driving on the wrong side of the road. You know, we don't go to the, the Ministry of Highways and, and accuse him of causing us to have an accident, okay? He instituted laws by which we are to drive. If we disobey those, we're going to reap the consequences thereof. And see, that's how it, it is with God. God doesn't respond to need. He responds to the person who is observing his laws. And we're to learn the ways of God, amen? We are to learn the ways of God. He walks with us as we walk in his ways. Um, and as we look at the secrets to answer prayer, we're going to discover, uh, we will discover the ways of God. Now, the definition of a problem is something that exists to be solved, amen? And, and this is like prayer. Prayer is made to be answered. Prayer is made to be answered. If prayer is not being answered, something's wrong because prayer exists to be answered. Now, need and desire, they are the motivation for prayer. You know, when we have a need, we pray, right? When we have a desire, we pray. Both of these are legitimate motivations for seeking God. See, and God, he is more than willing to answer our prayers. He's more than willing to meet our needs. He's more than willing to fulfill our desires. The basis for prayer, for the basis for, for faith in prayer is God loves us. God loves me. God loves you. God is a good God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it is God's will to answer our prayers. Now, there's, there's some there's a number of steps that we're going to go through. I don't know whether we're going to get through all of them today. Probably not. But there's some steps that we're going to go through talking about uh, steps to answer prayer. And over the next few messages, we're going to look at some of these today. So step number one is desire. You're taking notes. Step number one is desire. And our desires are of value to God. Our desires are of value to God. The desire can be born out of a deep need. However, throughout the Bible, we see God responding to faith rather than need. And many times as Jesus entered the temple, you know, he, he would have passed that beggar that was at the gate beautiful that we read about in is it Acts chapter 3 or Acts chapter 4. You know, when Peter and John, they came up and silver and gold have been up, but such as I have give you thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Jesus would have passed that guy many, many times. You know, but, but he, Jesus didn't heal him. The pool of Bethesda, I'll get that out, hallelujah. Uh, there were many sick people, yet Christ healed just that one. See, our need must also be heartfelt desire. Faith requires desire. You know, Jesus said in Mark 11, chapter, uh, Mark 11, verse 24, what things soever you desire when you pray. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So if you're hoping for a thing, guess what? That's desire. Our desire for important issues should become red hot. You know, you know Peter, he talks to us about having a, having, if I can put it this way, a white hot love for Christ. You know, Christian, Christianity is, is not a cool, heartless religion. In fact, it's not even religion. It's a relationship. Amen. Okay? Often God, he's waiting to just to see how real our desires are. And the, more, the main point here 
is that we are desire to we we are to desire something before faith can come into play. Our desires are of value to God. Amen. It's His will to fulfill those dreams. See, and when we are delighting to the Lord, when we're delighting in the Lord, our dreams and our desires, they are formed in his spirit. They're formed in his timing. They're formed in his purpose. And delighting in the Lord is simply fulfilling the first command, which is love the Lord your God first, above all else, before all other things. See, our relationship with God is vital to have that effective faith. Faith goes stronger through the hearing of the word of God. Um, it also goes stronger through the, those trials, those, that through also through fellowship with God. See, and if our delight in God begins to fade, if our delight in God begins to, we should always be delighting in him, amen? amen. If our delight in God begins to fade, guess what, that faith is gonna start to fade as well. It's always essential to maintain a vital, personal communion with the Lord. Amen. You know, like, we can't just base our relationship with God showing up for one hour at church on Sunday morning. Come on. Come on. You know, we, you don't do that in your personal relationship. I hope you don't, because, you know, if you're, if you're a married couple and you only talk to your spouse once a week, <laughs> it might be time for some marriage counseling. You know, uh, Roz, I'm only going to talk to you between 11 and 12 on Tuesday afternoon. Okay. Or, or, sorry, Tuesday morning. The rest of the time, don't bother me. Because <laughs> I'm busy. Uh, we, we wouldn't even think of doing that with, with, our, uh, with our spouse. But God, it's like, you know, we got him in the little box. You know, God, here's the time that I'm going to be holy. Between 10 o'clock, because 10 o'clock prayer, and well, maybe the you know, pastor David goes a little longer, we may get out by about 12.30. So maybe two and a half hours, I've cordoned off this time to God, and you that's the only time that you can speak, that's the only time that we're going to have fellowship. After that, back off, buddy. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. If our delight in God begins to fade, our faith will fade as well. Essential to maintain a vital, personal relationship with the Lord. Psalm 37. You have your Bibles? Turn there, please. I hear a funny cracking. Psalm 37. Hallelujah. Psalm 37, verse 4, says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That brings us to step two. Step two is decide. To decide. You know, you can write this down. Just remember this. This is interesting. 99% of the will of God is common sense. <laughs> 99% of the will of God is common sense. Decision is faith operating in our will. See, without decision, man doesn't have a mind. It's essential that he makes up his mind. Okay? A, mind is an un a mind is unmade by lack of decision and conversely made through clear, strong decision. You know, James chapter 1, you can mark that verse down, James 1 verses 6 to 8, says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he is going to receive anything from the Lord. Unstable man, tossed to and fro. So see, so decision is a crucial element in gaining answers to prayer. You know, in fact, a lot of theologians and, and historians and scholars believe that, that James, who, you know, he wrote the book of James, they believe that James was the actual brother of Jesus. Right? He, he belonged to the same family. Uh, had Mary and Joseph for parents and grew up alongside Christ. I just want to take a couple minutes. We're going to play a, a video. This is called Jesus' Little Brother. So I want you to watch this. Okay? Trust that it's going to come up. <coughs> Not it. 
need some volume there. Is there anybody who wants to? Okay. I like reading the Bible. I was reading the Bible. Found out, uh, found out Jesus had a little brother. Anybody know his name? James. When I read it, I was like, how much pressure was that? <laughs> Jesus, your big brother? How many times do you have to hear, why come you can't be more like Jesus, James? Because <laughs> you know, everybody probably thought that James could do the same thing Jesus could do, but he couldn't. He was just James. He wasn't James Christ. <laughs> Remember, when they banquet, Jesus turned water to wine. Everybody was amazed, but they don't tell you about the next banquet. <laughs> Jesus left early. They started running out of wine. Everybody looked at James. <laughs> it's like, man, last time this happened, your brother made some wine, dude. You, you just gonna stand there with your sandals on? You're not gonna. <laughs> maybe make some Kool Aid or something, man? You're not gonna make them. You know James had problems just like any other kid had problems. He tried to follow his big brother around. So everywhere Jesus went, James followed. That's what little brothers do. So if Jesus went there, so did James. I bet one time James almost drowned. <laughs> oh, you just got that joke just now. Didn't you? <laughs> Jesus walked on water and James tried. <laughs> I'm sure James had problems. He would go to his parents with his problems. And his parents, especially his, his mom, was trying to throw him a bone once in a while. They'd pray over their food. They're like, Lord, we just thank you for this food in James' name. <laughs> James had problems. He would go with his parents with his problems. You know what they would say? He'd be like, well, what would Jesus do? You know? <laughs> then they gave him a bracelet. They gave him a bracelet. And um, <laughs> then he started selling those bracelets. You know? <laughs> Made some money selling bracelets. What would be cool is, well, what would James do bracelet, right? Same initials, different meaning. Completely different meaning. You driving down the street, you cut off in traffic. You fuss them out, your passion will be like, yo, we got a woman with Jesus to brace it on. I'm like, uh uh, that's what would James do. I'm driving an imaginary car for a long time, isn't it? Also found out when Jesus was 12 years old, Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. They lost Jesus. And you know the first thing they had to do was pray. I wonder what that prayer must have sounded like. Joseph probably did the prayer. He was like, oh, God. <laughs> Dear God, um, oh, forgiving God. Um, Messiah you gave us? You got another one somewhere, man? You know. That was the only we got us? Okay, we're gonna find him. We're gonna find him. Anyway. Hallelujah. Alright, so talking about James. Alright? The most difficult decision that James ever had to make was to accept that this man was the Messiah. They arrived at this decision, it would seem, after Christ had died and been resurrected. So it obviously took some time, and we could well imagine that some serious heart searching had to take place to accept your brother <laughs> as your eternal Savior and Almighty God, okay? I mean, you can appreciate it would not be the easiest decision that he would have to make, but he did. He, also, he had also known the terrible dilemma of living with indecision. The confusion and weakness of mind that was associated with it all helped Jesus, sorry, James, I'm gonna get go, James, help me, Lord, to arrive at the conclusion that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, we, sometimes we fear decision-making, you know? 
Not only does it open doors ahead of us, but it demands that we close our options to other alternatives. That can be very unnerving for some people. If we decide that we're going to be hmm, a dentist, okay, we close the door to training for anything else. When we decide that we're going to marry one girl, we preclude ourselves from all others. The need to make absolute choices can create uh, uncertainty and tempt us to procrastinate. You know, another route we can take to avoid making decisions is to ask God to guide us. Now, we should, now don't get me wrong and don't hear what I'm not saying, okay? We should always seek the guidance of God, okay? But it may not always come as clearly and swiftly as we would like. Now, if God doesn't speak, some people don't act. I mean, if they could hear a word from him, okay, they would have no choice but to do what God said. However, this still does not answer uh, the decision-making dilemma. You know, it's a little bit like the guy who asked for some guidance of where he should go uh, to, to you know, be a missionary. Moments later, he sees an ad for Brazil nuts. <laughs> I figure, well, Lord God, you're calling me to Brazil. And I say, thank God that man didn't see an ad for Mars bar. <laughs> I mean, that kind of thinking that interprets every little event of life as a sign from God can tend to get a little neurotic. Okay? This, is, this is not the will of God. 99% of the will of God is common sense. Okay? No one is going to begin steering a car until it's moving. Okay? God does not guide people while they're standing still motionless. The Bible abounds with examples of God coming where? To busy men and women. You know, the people God used and guided were not sitting around. You know, waiting to receive guidance without first doing what? First stepping into action. They were already active and mobile. See, the will of God has loomed in the minds of some people as this, this enormous, unpredictable monster that, that they have become fearful of doing anything in case it's not the will of God. You know, when, when Jesus asked Barnabas what he wanted, he was eliciting a decision from this blind beggar. I mean, it was obvious to everybody what Barnabas needed. Yet God wanted him to state his desire and make a decision of faith to receive his healing. If a man knows what he wants, then he's in a position to decide that he's going to get it. That's faith. The determined decision of a man with desire. Now, a typical prayer may sound something like this. Oh, Lord... Far be it for me to tell you what I want. All I want is to want what you want. My will is to do your will. Whatever you desire me to desire, that I will desire. If you should will that I have something, then I will desire it with all my will, if you will. <laughs> See, so we remain as confused as that prayer. Because we are decisionless. Should we happen to stray off the track, Isaiah says that, he will hear, that he, we will hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Isaiah 30, verse 21. See, this enables us to be unconcerned if we're not hearing daily words from God for guidance. In fact, this can be interpreted positively. Think about it. His silence can easily mean that you're on the right track. He doesn't have to talk to you. He doesn't have to correct you because you're on the right path. See, when Paul, when he embarked on his missionary journeys, he mapped out a plan of action and a prescribed route. Now, mostly he was right on target in regard to the will of God. However, there was a couple of instances when he prepared to go into a certain area of Asia, but what happened, the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh, don't go there. And he changed his direction. He traveled a little further down the road, and once again, he attempted to go into Asia. Again, the Holy Spirit prevented him. So he simply kept traveling until he ran out of land, and he couldn't travel any further. He came to the ocean. There a vision came to Paul. And it was a Macedonian man saying, hey, come over and help us. You can read about it in Acts 16, verse 9. Thus, Europe received the decisions, okay? Mostly they were correct. Rarely were they wrong. But when, they, but, when they were, but when they were, God spoke. 
and Paul made the necessary adjustments. God expects you and I to make decisions. Obviously, there are to be decisions arrived at with a sense of God in them. You know, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit your plans to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. And Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he, he'll do what? He will direct your path. Brings us to step number three, which is ask. Ask. Faith is the master key that unlocks all of heaven's doors. I like that. Faith is the master key that unlocks all of heaven's doors. Now, Jesus declared in John 16, verse 24, Ask, and you will receive. James says in James 4, 2, You have not, because you ask not. You know, prayer is the most powerful ability that we as believers have access to. And there's many kinds of prayer. Paul said in Ephesians 6, verse 18, Pray with all kinds of prayer. So, we, you know, when we can, we can engage in spiritual warfare, we can, we can intercede. We can praise, we can worship, we can meditate, we can commune, we can fellowship with God, all in that prayer mode. And we're talking about here, of course, the prayer of faith. As when we know what we want, we've decided that we are going to have it, we ask God for it. We ask him to enable us to obtain it. Uh, Luke uh, 18, verse 1 says, Men ought always to pray and not faint. And he proceeded to tell the story of a widow. Now, Jesus, he always illustrated the principles that he was expounding on. He was a classic uh, storyteller. And a lot of his communication, he showed what he was talking about. You know, in fact, people in television, they understand this principle. There's a tell and show. Tell and show is the law of communication. Often it's about 90% show. You know, you, 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 you turn on the news, the 6 o'clock news. The, the newscaster appears and tells of a, of a tragic event that's taken place. And as they continue to talk, they cut to the scene and, and show the, us digitally the event that they're describing is taking place. The tell and show. And a large proportion of Christ's teaching used stories to illustrate the point that he was, that he was wanting to make. In fact, there's five different kinds, and I'm just going to give you these very, very quickly, very briefly. But there's five different kinds of stories that we can use when we communicate with others. And it's important to make the Word of God attractive and appetizing. These are the five personal testimonies. Number one. Number two is parables. Number three is Bible stories. Number four is testimonies of others' experiences. And number five is humorous stories illustrating the point. Okay, so personal testimonies, parables, Bible stories, testimonies of others, others, people's experiences, humorous stories that illustrate a point. Now, there's two parables. We're going to look at those briefly. Jesus used to illustrate what he was saying concerning prayer. And the first one is found in Luke chapter 18. In fact, we can turn over there, please. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. And my hands are so dry. <laughs> yeah. Can't even turn the page. All right, Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. And he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God in regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, uh, lest by her continual coming she, wear, she, she weary me. Pardon me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own, uh, his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears along with them. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? All right, so you have this, this widow that's come before this judge. I think it's concerning a piece of land. Maybe a relative was contesting her rights. 
So the story opens up in court. And Jesus tells us the judge feared neither God nor man. Perhaps the relative had bribed this judge in some way. We don't know the, the back story. What we do know is that the judge felt no moral obligation uh, to support the plight of this widow. And the Bible depicts a widow as, as the most defenseless and vulnerable of all people. The judge, however, was unmoved by the circumstances of this lady. And Jewish law required that uh, the lands remain within the family line of the male. So it was probable a brother that was attempting to obtain the land. The widow, however, and rightly so, uh, felt that she had more right to the land than if it was, in fact, her brother. Now, the judge's patience is short, and his attitude is, let's get this out of the way quickly and neatly. And so he awards the land to the plaintiff. Case dismissed. Next. Next morning, however, the first person in the courtroom is the little widow. And raising her voice, she cries out to the, to the judge, justice, justice. And he refuses her plea and promptly has her thrown out. Well, after lunch, he returns to the bench. There again is the little widow asking for justice, asking for her land. And again, he orders her out of the court with a warning that she's in danger of contempt of court. Now, most of us at that stage, would, you know, we put our heads together and we probably think, hey, you know, I'm going to rethink my position here and, you know, maybe I better not continue to push this any further than I have and would we'll probably most likely give up. However, not this lady. The next morning, waiting on the steps for the courthouse to open is the widow. <laughs> and she boldly approaches the bench, knowing that what she is after is legally and legitimately hers. It's a difficult thing when we've been rejected to go back to that same person and ask again. But for not for this lady. She was absolutely determined to get what she wanted and was not going to rest until she obtained it. So ask, ask, continue to ask again and again. The widow arrived at the courthouse to present her case. Again and again, the compassionless judge threw her out. But guess what? He's being worn down. He was getting worn down, and eventually he probably began to fear for his health. Finally, against his better wishes and for his sanity's sake, he granted the widow her request. Anything, anything, just get her out of my sight. <laughs> See, neither God nor man, he was under no moral obligation to heed the woman's request. God is God and is able to do exactly as he chooses. Yet this illustration tells us that a certain tenacity... Come on, a certain tenacity moves even Almighty God Amen. in gaining answers to our prayers. Amen. I mean, I, to me, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that, that should excite us, hallelujah. That should propel us into a place uh, of such persistence as this widow had. You know, Jesus is telling us that persistent prayer, persistent prayer will break. You want a breakthrough? You keep praying, you keep praying. You're going to break through that thing. You're going to break through and obtain the answers. This kind of prayer is, is take, what's the word I'm looking for? Inopportune, is that the right word? I don't know, I'm going to maybe just made a word up, okay? It literally means unashamed barefacedness. In other words, I'm not going to get anybody get in my face. Not anybody's going to stop me. I am going to get this thing. I'm not going to back down. And the woman refused to feel embarrassed. She refused to be embarrassed or ashamed because this judge had her case thrown out in court. Not once, but several times. She persisted until she received exactly her request. No compromise. Come on, no compromise. Never thought, well, you know, maybe let's just go 50-50. You know? No, it was, it was all. And she won. She got what she was after. You know, another record in the Bible of an actual event, Matthew 15, verses 22 through 28. Uh, you can mark those verses down. It's also uh, told to us in uh, Mark 7, verses 25 through 30. It talks about a woman whose daughter is demonized. Okay, she approaches Jesus for the healing of her little girl. And at first, Jesus ignores her. And the disciples attempt, you know, don't, don't, don't bother the master. Come on, shh, go away, you know? But you know what? She continues to cry out to the Lord, he, and he refuses a request. However, this woman is not about to give up that easily. A lot of us would more than likely assume at this point, well, you know, maybe it wasn't God's will to heal. Come 
Maybe it wasn't his will to heal. Uh, and I'm sure this was probably the disciples' attitude. Don't bother the master. Okay? Just go away. Just go away, lady. Just don't bother him. See, and just because our prayers are not answered the first time does not mean that God's will has been revealed. Okay? His will, often hidden by our circumstances, is always revealed in his word. Okay, so this woman, she recognized that Christ was both compassionate and willing to heal. Without fear, it seems, she approaches him again. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says, hey, it is not proper to give to the Gentiles, of which this lady was obviously one, uh, what God has reserved for Israel, for the Jews. And he adds that it's not proper to give the children's bread to the dogs. Now, such as he's just called her a dog. <laughs> Somebody called you a dog. You gonna hang around? That statement. I mean, a lot of us would be. I'm gone. You know, we're looking like a for a lawyer to sue you or something. You know, but not this lady. She continues to press. She continues to press in. Her answer is, <laughs> and imagine if you will, the mouths of the disciples dropping open, and as she, as she dares to reply. Even dogs, even dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Even dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Jesus, he's amazed. He's amazed. He identifies this woman's actions as being great faith. Great faith. The woman's daughter, guess what? Is healed. She got what she came for because why? Because she persisted and would not give up even in the face of seeming reluctance from God. Unashamed barefacedness, another word for it is tenacity. Tenacity. Uh, being bold enough to get back up again, to get back up, to get back up, to continue to get back up. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness on you. Seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness on you. He doesn't say, well, seek him for 30 minutes. I don't see any righteousness being rained on me, so... Meh. <laughs> he doesn't say, seek him for two hours. He doesn't say, seek him for a day. He says, keep going until. Seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness on you. Seek him until when? Until you get that breakthrough. Amen. The power of persistence is not to be underestimated. Amen. Another parable. And I think I'm going to close with this one. Can everyone say amen? <laughs> Another parable found in Luke chapter 11 verses 5 through 8. Tells us of the man whose friend arrives at midnight. Now travelers, they, they often set out at dusk. Traveled in the, in the cool of the night, avoiding the exhausting heat and, and, and the evaporation of the day. This man had obviously timed his halfway point to be at this individual's house. Now, Eastern people, they place a, a great deal of importance on hospitality. One of the highest duties of an Israeli. To fail in this regard was to fail as a child of Abraham, whose own hospitality had caused him to entertain angels and even God. I mean, had Abraham been negligent in providing that hospitality, he would have missed the opportunity to eat and meet with God. As any child of Abraham's seed inherited a sense of divine obligation to provide the best of hospitality. So this gentleman in the parable, he's got a real problem. Completely unprepared for any guests at all. He doesn't even have a loaf of bread. He knows that his neighbor friend does. So to avoid the embarrassment of being unable to provide adequate hospitality, he decides to wake his friend and ask for some bread. Now, that sounds easy when we read that, but you gotta, again, you realize back then, many Eastern homes were uh, constructed as one large room where everybody slept, including the animals. So you got the cows, the ducks, the sheep, you name it. They would sleep in the central courtyard area in some homes. So to awaken the inhabitants of the home was to awaken the entire household and create a real circus in the middle of the night. 
See, this man, he needed to make a decision about which embarrassment was worse, waking up his friend's household or being unable to supply his other friend's need of requirement for refreshments. So he decides to wake up his neighbor. He knocks on the door, but his friend tells him to do what? Go away. And at this point that we discover whether or not we are people of faith, or in, the words, or in other words, people of unashamed barefacedness, tenacity. And see, the reason why, the reason why miracles were so prevalent, prevalent, pardon me, in the early church was that those men and women were bold. Yeah, come, on. come on. Bold beyond belief. Amen. Bold beyond belief. In our, in our attempt to maintain the goodwill of everyone, we sometimes, we find ourselves being timid. We find ourselves being fearful of, of, of the opinions of men. This achieves nothing but the dilution of God's power. Back to the story. The man is not about to be turned away. He knocks again. Jesus explains right there that his friend doesn't open up to him merely because he's his friend. See, I earnestly believe in a close, deep, personal relationship with the Lord. However, this does not guarantee answers to prayer. Faith does. Faith is the master key that unlocks all of heaven's doors. Faith is the collateral of God. Amen. Faith is the collateral of God. It's the currency of heaven. Amen. Without it, we are unable to purchase anything from God. He issues the invitation, come, buy wine and milk, without price, without money. How do we buy without money? With faith. That's how. And Jesus goes on to explain that, that it's because of the man's importunity that the neighbor opens the door and gives him whatever he wants. Faith persists. Faith is persistent. Faith does not faint. It makes decisions. It's determined to obtain the promises of God. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to leave it there today. Next week, we're going to pick up with the rest of the steps. But I trust that you learned something today. Let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you. Lord God, we thank you. I just pray for each one right now. And God, I pray for each one a boldness to come upon each one within this congregation today. Especially when we, it comes to coming before you uh, in prayer, Lord God. God, I pray for a tenacity. I pray for a boldness, Father God. Lord, in Jesus' name, God, I just like this woman <laughs> with, the, with, with the judge. Lord God, she was not going to be t deterred. She was not going to be put off. She was not going to be disappointed. And so, Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that each one come, Lord God, that, God, we pray. God, and we're just, I just pray that our prayers are not just bouncing off the ceiling. But God, I pray in Jesus' name, God, because of the relationship that we have with you, God, you, God, God, the way that we're formed, the way that we, we, we have needs, we have prayers. There's desires that we want to see met. This is not for selfish gain or anything, Father God. We have legitimate needs that we're bringing before your throne. And God, I pray that we get a hold of this, that we come with a boldness and assurance and a fire and a not back downness, Father God. And God, we see these things begin to be manifest, Father God, because prayer exists to be answered. Prayer exists to be answered. But Father God, the most important thing of all is that we, of course, we are your children. And so Father God, I pray every head is bowed, every eye is closed today. You're here today and you have not made, ever made that decision as Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. You say, well, I've been in church all my life. Well, that doesn't make you born again Christian. You have to come to that place where you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior, your personal Lord and your personal Savior. And say, I cannot do this in my strength. I can't do this in my ability. God, <laughs> look what I've done. <laughs> look how it's turned out. God, I need you. And so you hear today, you say, Pastor David, that's me. I need to ask Jesus Christ into my heart. I need to ask him into my life today. I want to be called a child of the King. You lift up your hand. Maybe anybody here in the congregation, anybody that's watching this later today, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Anybody at all? Praise the name of Jesus.
The Bible says that those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you're calling upon the name of the Lord today. You will be saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, maybe you're here today. One time you gave your life to Christ. But you know in your heart that your relationship with him is not in the place that it needs to be and it should be. And you want to come today. You want to return to him. You want to rededicate your life afresh and new to him. Holy Spirit is here to do that work as well. So that's you today. Anybody at all? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you continue to draw your people to you. God, that we keep that relationship with you fresh, Lord God, and up to date. God, we're not living off of yesterday's bread. God, but each and every day, hallelujah. Lord God, that relationship that we have with you is fresh. It's vibrant. It's living. We're taking steps forward. We're not taking steps backwards in our relationship with you, Father God. Continue to draw each one closer to you each day, we pray. In Jesus' precious name. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, maybe you're here today and you've got uh, sickness in your physical body. Does anybody at all want to require a prayer? Anybody at all? Okay. Dupe. All right. Some people, some ladies, some hands on Dupe over there, please. Be bold. Praise the name. Just raise your hands towards your sister right now. These ladies lay hands upon her. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now, Lord God. You are her healer, Father God. You are the restorer of health to her body. You are her strength, Father God. And Lord, we thank you right now. As hands are laid upon her, we thank you for healing power. We thank you for healing virtue to flood into her body right now. We thank you that you strengthen her. Touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God. We thank you that you are no respecter of persons, Father God. And so we thank you that healing is her portion. Healing is her bread, Father God. And I thank you for that divine touch upon her now, Father God. Heal her, strengthen her, make her every bit whole and well, Father God. To your glory and honor, we praise and thank you for that now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to, to pray over the offering as well. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have uh, to give in this offering today. Lord God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You are the all-sufficient one, Father God. And we thank you for every need of every household that is here today and is met. Every need of Royal City Community yeah. Church is met, Father God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your blessing upon each one, gift and giver. We bless and thank you for that now, in Jesus' precious name. Everyone in agreement said, amen. Amen. amen, 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 hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. I want to quickly draw some announcements to your attention. Uh, I'm not going to, since I know our sister wants to give a testimony. So well, I'm just going to do the announcements, and then we're going to have you come up and share your testimony. So um, she's still going to do it. You're still going to do it, Mama Shola, right? You're prepared? Okay. okay. <laughs> just making sure. Okay. Uh, quickly drawing announcements to your attention. Just remind you that um, Wednesday evening we have uh, prayer, pre-service oh, pre prayer, online prayer that takes place Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., 7 till 8 uh, you can join us online. Uh, we just lift up the needs and various requests that come in through the week. Uh, you can join us for that time of prayer. Uh, we also have uh, pre-service prayer is actually Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Uh, I just noticed I send out that email to you guys every Tuesday, and I've been neglectful to remember to put on pre-service prayer. So just remind you that that's 10 o'clock on Tuesday. Tuesday, what am I saying? Sunday morning. My goodness. Rented lips. Hello. Anyways, wow. Uh, yeah, if you have any needs or requests, you can fill out the prayer card, uh, the connection card that is in your bulletin, and you can drop that in the offering, and we'll make sure that we uh, uh, are bringing those requests before the Lord on Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Uh, Women of Destiny.
There is a meeting for all the ladies that's taking place on Saturday, the 29th of this month. Uh, so I encourage you to be out for that. Ross has a sign up clipboard. And so please make that available to yourself coming together uh, here uh, at the church uh, for that morning. And what time is that? 11 a.m. on the Saturday, the 29th. Uh, just to, of course, we were in the, well, we have the Bible study, of course, the Bible study on the book of Hebrews is continuing every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You can tune in to the, through the uh, YouTube channel or Facebook page, and you can follow that Bible study online. We're still working through the book of Hebrews chapter 11, which is an awesome chapter, learning a lot and gleaning a lot from that. So uh, make that available to yourself as well. Uh, I think there's something I always yes. seem to go, hmm? yes. yes, I know that. Uh, I want you to mark down, um, this isn't anybody's announcement yet, so this is the first time. First Fruit Sunday will be the last Sunday in February. Okay, so I think that's like the 27th or something like that. We'll get the date, it'll be sent out. But important that we start praying about what God would have us do in our First Fruits uh, individually uh, and what we're also going to do as a church as well. So just be uh, starting to be in prayer about that. Uh, there'll be some teaching prior to that Sunday uh, in regards to first fruits. Uh, praise God, we have some guests with us today. So glad that you can join us. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. Thank you, we have a, a gift bag. If we could make sure that somebody gets a gift bag to them, please. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Is there anything else, Roz? I, I always got up and I go, oh. Upcoming. Upcoming events. Well, they're coming up. You will, you'll know about them when they come, right? So there you go. Praise God. I'll get you to stand with me if you will, please. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, there's the last thing there. If you need any help, oh, I'm dismissing and I forgot Mama Shola. Oh, guys, sit down. Good Lord. What are we doing? Sorry, Mama Shola. You could have come up in like the widow and said, What are you doing? Come on. Praise the Lord. Our sister's got a testimony that she wants to come and share today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Actually, after I talked to Ross, some challenges came up that could have prevented me from giving this testimony. But the word of God stands forever. Amen. So, I still have to give the testimony for what God has done. First, I desire that my daughter and the husband should come back to Canada. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I took the decision that I will continue to call upon the name of the Lord for what I wanted for their safety in coming yes. back. Amen. So when Pastor and his wife came to visit me to, during Christmas, I told Ross, I said, you know, pray with me. And I told her specifically what I needed, that all protocols be broken Amen. and policies be overturned mm -hmm. to favor their return. Amen. And this was exactly done. Amen. Because they didn't have to go and stay in the hotel for many days before uh, any result would come up. Mm -hmm. So they came home straight. Yeah. And also I added one thing to Ross. I said, let them be the number one on the list <laughs> of the people to get a flight back. And God did it. Yeah. So I just have to stand here to say my hallelujah, hallelujah. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who did that for me and answer the prayer? Because without even listening to this uh, sermon before, I demonstrated tenacity concerning the, 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 the they are coming back without obstruction, without obstacle. I decided that it should come to pass, and I stuck to the word of God that as it shall be given until we ask and it was given. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mama Shola. Amen. Tenacity. Yeah. Bulldog tenacity. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mama's Come on. Yeah. The mama tenacity. There you go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You know, and because we were praying as well, and I'm sure others were as well. And we were actually praying uh, that day um, that you got home. And it was like, we just finished praying. We were just praying before we were eating. We, we, we don't do just a simple, you know, Lord bless this food. It's like we got this whole, you know, <laughs> list of things and people and you guys were on the list. And I think just shortly after the prayer, we got the phone call. Yeah. So praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Get you to stand with me, if you will, please. Praise God. Well, thank you for being here today. God bless you. And have a wonderful rest of the day. Please greet our guests. You, you are dismissed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.